Hello everybody and welcome back to the DCAC channel where in this series we solve technical lead code questions in Python so we basically practice technical lead, um, technical interview questions and basically programming in Python sorry for the um, kind of scattered uploads I've been dealing with some personal uh, projects lately maybe I'll uh, make some videos uh, kind of showcasing some of them some of them are pretty nice like one of them is a basically a 2D Ace Runner that you can uh, it basically renders in the terminal console. So I'm not using any game engine for it. Basically, I kind of render the, the the graphics in the terminal using as ASCII codes and all that. It's pretty cool. Uh, we'll see. Now back to the questions here. Uh, you know what? I saw this this one middle of the linked list. Uh, I think it shouldn't be a, a hard problem, from what I can kind of understand from the name of it. But since we haven't done anything with linked lists, or at least maybe very little, it's kind of cool. Uh, 876, middle of the linked list. Given a non-empty, singly linked list with a head node, head, return the middle node of a linked list. If there are two middle nodes, return the second middle node. All right, now if we have an input like this, uh, we can basically, how would a human do that? I was thinking, okay, like just reading from here, it, it, it kind of made sense that this is going to be the type of question. You would basically think about it this way. You would see how much elements you get in the list. At least a human can kind of see that from, from, from like a bystander's point of view, right? And then you can easily deduct what the middle is. Um, output node 3 from this list serialization 345 what is 345 um, return the middle node um, the return node has value 3 the judge's serialization of this node is 345 note that we returned a list node object answer such as uh, answer dot value equals three. Answer next value equals four. Answer next next value equals five. And answer next 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 equals null. Um, I guess we are returning something like that. We need to return a list node. Uh, I'm assuming since you are getting uh, the head uh, kind of like pointer you don't really need to think about this type of answer you're just returning the list node and the list node will contain basically the value itself so should be okay if we basically do our you know, do algorithm and then just return uh, matching list node and that is all uh, we'll see though <laughs> I haven't read anything so maybe there are some other stuff Let's have this one for example, again a human will basically look at how many elements are there and you cannot really do that by default in a singly linked list, right? But you can always just, just go over through all of them, you know, just loop once through all the elements, get the length and then work, your, uh, work with the same information a human reading the list would have, uh, which is basically just the length of it. Uh, dividing the length of course it would, it would give us if if there are two middles it would give us a solid integer uh, if it if there is a single middle it would give us a uh, yeah it would give us uh, in this case to give us a float in this case to give us an integer but I guess we could do this even better we'll see uh, and I'm recording so a node the number of nodes in the given list will be between 1 and 100 so in this case we, well our algorithm would be at least constrained by the amount of uh, elements we know that for sure at least the way we'll program this one and uh, let's say this size would be zero for or no while or right, let's see um I guess we can say head while head is not now um, we know that head right now points to a list right 
head.val should give us a value, head.next would be the next element. And how do we uh, approach this? Now we say list size for each of those steps here, right, right now head is pointing to the first node. And then there is, there is the first node is pointing to the second node, second node to the third node, and so forth, right? Let's have it like this. And then at the end, there is something that is pointing to the null element. That's why we say like this. So list size would be increased by one. And we just say that now head would be head next. So basically this one would have the value and the next in its uh, place, right? So that's why we move it from here. Our pointer now moves to this one and it just repeats for all of them. Now we want to see how to get the middle. And um, we want an intuitive way I guess uh, so we can just kind of divide and and know immediately uh, what's the yeah we we would definitely know for example if it's uh, an odd yeah let's let's quickly check that for example print me for module two would give us a zero and uh, I wouldn't even want that to be honest with you now that I think about it I only want something for example like if we divide something like this gives 2.0 right and um, hmm. I will quickly think about it uh, some, some better way or maybe we'll just do it live. Let's think about it in a interesting, like s some interesting way we can capture both cases under a single kind of like condition. Um, we know that, for example, in this situation, like for example, if we have six, right? Six divided by two, would give us 3.0 5 divided by 2 would give us 2.5 for the 2.5 case we are going to be taking the third element for the 3 case we're going to be taking the fourth element um how would that how would that benefit us i would say how about for the 5 case we divide um, we divide it basically as a6 that would always give us the index that we are looking for and we can always just say int uh, would, it, would we want to do it as an int we would actually want to do it like I think we need to say import map and then we just say math. Um, we want the ceiling. And as you can see, the ceiling for the first case would be the three. In the second case where we have six elements, so basically an even number of case, uh, elements, we do the seven, this should return us the four because dividing by two, uh, seven divided by two is 3.5, the ceiling of that four. So basically our formula, um, so basically four, let's see where we are here, four um, nodes, let's see, um, mm -hmm -hmm. We know that we are looking for the fourth one, right? Um, let's see. Uh, let, let's have it as 
I guess as an iterator, uh, like a variable. Visited count would be zero. So while visited count is not equal and now we do our thingy so basically we want to import map and we want to say map dot ceiling of the list size plus one divide by two uh, here this is exactly our solution here, right? The seven is our link, si uh, link list size that we got from before. While this is not the case, uh, we want to kind of... Hmm. Problem. <laughs> our head will be at the very end uh, in this case. What we could do is we can have... Um, Head um, init initiator. How do we, how do we call it? Head statistics would be a copy of head, and actually we will use this one the other the whole way around. Um, type it out we will use this one just so we can use the original one later on and I'm assuming the original one will not be reset because we're doing a copy I think that's that's how it should work we'll see <laughs> and now back to our previous basically step while the visited count is not the one that we are looking for um we say visited count is increased by one and again head would be moved to the next one right so for the first item we see we haven't visited any yet i guess would we do it like this no we would do it like this and uh, why do we do it like this? Because this is the first one is already visited, right? If we know that the one we are visiting right now, like the head is pointing to the first one, if we know that we're looking for the first one, we can already return it. And uh, we just say return head at the end. So basically, after we are done looping here and we find that, um, yeah, we find that we end up here I think we'll be already in the yeah we basically escape this loop and we have head positioned exactly at the element that um, that we want to return now let's test it because I think there are multiple things that could go wrong like for example copy has no attribute copy. Um, how can we do this then? I mean, I can try, but I don't think that this will work for us. No. Um, How's it called then? Non. I guess. We'll see. Okay, I'm not sure if the copy even worked here. I guess it did, because otherwise our head pointer would have been moved to the very end of the list and we couldn't really work with it here anymore. We got our output and it seems that exactly the element that they wanted is just an element we don't really need to care about uh, what's behind that element. It should be a linked list node, right? So uh, let's try the other one, the non-standard one, because in this case, we should be looking at number four, right? And we kind of programmed it to look at number four, but we should have to test it first. 
and it is accepted. Uh, sounds like good news, everything here. Should we submit it? I think we should submit it and then maybe think about if we want to improve something. So it's a success, it's not the fastest one, but uh, like I said, we shouldn't really look at that. Um, in this type of interviews, it's mostly important to solve the question. Uh, they're not focused on uh, improving, from what I know at least, they're not focused on improving the algorithm to, to the best case scenario possible. You, they could ask you about it, you should talk about it, for example, what, what could be done to be improved. For example, I can say, yeah, here I'm importing this math library. Um, I'm assuming, for example, this is basically imported into the function, I can move it out. Uh, this will save some time. Uh, I can even not use the math library, do some other weird logic here. Um, yeah, this should kind of improve performance. And uh, other than that, I don't really see much more that can be improved. Like in our runtime analysis, like I said, we have to run once throughout the whole uh, linked list and you cannot really do it otherwise. You don't really know its size. You could have done something like a variable that kind of tracks that, for example, I don't know, like another object that kind of has the linked list in itself and it also has the length of the linked list, then it would be even faster. But that's besides the point. Uh, in this case, like I said, we go once over the linked list and we all also go like once uh, half around like half of the list. And this would mean our runtime would be O of N plus N uh, half. I don't even know N half, if N half is even a thing in, <laughs> in all analysis. So I would say O of N. And when it comes to space complexity, we are not doing anything, we are just looping over pointers, right? We're using pointers, we have two variables here, which is like nothing. And yeah, that is all. So I hope that was educational. Uh, we got to play with some linked lists, which is pretty cool, uh, always kind of confusing. Like it's a kind of like a one-way train, right? You start from the beginning, you end up to the end and the pointer is already there and you really, you should, <laughs> What are you doing then? You have to reset it somehow. <laughs> I don't know. I, I haven't worked so much with linked lists, so maybe I'm being kind of like uh, noobish here. Who knows? But that's why I'm also learning with, with you guys. And um, yeah, have fun for now. Try it out. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.